Rahim, looking at Imam Ghazali's uh, Iqbal's discussion of Ghazali and his comparison with Kant. And we had stopped here, Ghazali finding no hope in analytic thought. And we looked at what he means by analytic thought. Move to mystic experience. We looked at the meaning of mystic experience in the last session. And they found an independent content for religion. And we looked at the meaning of independent content for religion. In this way, he succeeded in securing for religion the right to exist. I guess by the right to exist, he mean justification. Independently of science and metaphysics. So science, uh, religion is not subservient to either science or metaphysics, but... It has its own just independent justification, which is in the mystic's experience. That is according to Iqbal's interpretation of Ghazali. That's what Ghazali believed, according to Iqbal. But the revelation of the total infinite in mystic experience. By revelation, he means experience. So, Yeah, experience and coming face to face with infinite <laughs> in mystic experience. I mean, mystic experience are just the reflection of infinite. A tiny, so you can't say a revelation of the total infinite in mystic experience. Uh, even um, with Musa al-Islam, it's just a reflection, tajalli. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ went beyond that. But even that is like from the perspective of, per pers perspective of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just a tiny drop in the ocean of his existence. Um, so it, this, uh, but the revelation of the total infinite in mystic experience convinced him, convinced Ghazali of the finitude and inconclusiveness of thought. I don't think he ever <laughs> even suspected that thought was infinite. Otherwise, uh, he would have thought like uh, Hegel that thought is God. And drove him to draw a line of cleavage between thought and intuition. In fact, uh, in fact if you look at al Munkaz Minat Dalal, and we will look a bit into it, for example, on section on Hakikat al Nabuwa was Torari Kafat al Khalki Leha. In that section, Ghazali, among other things, makes clear that he doesn't uh, draw a line of cleavage between thought and intuition. In fact, uh, he does uh, think that uh, he does believe in some sort of intuition for. Uh, reason or al-aql. So that's not true at all. He failed to see that the thought intuition organic. So that is uh, Iqbal's uh, <laughs> way of reading Ghazali through the modern Cartesian paradigm and through um, the Hegelian problematic that is the opposition between he Hegelian critique of Kant. So basically he's trying to develop. First he First, he sort of uh, reads uh, Ghazali in light of Descartes and Kant, and then he criticizes Ghazali uh, from a, a Hegelian vantage point. So, but let us look at uh, what Ghazali is actually. Did Ghazali look for infinite experience in analytic thought and then when he didn't find it he moved to mystic experience he found it there or is it is it totally a different sort of thing that Ghazali was doing so I'm going to look at uh, first his definition of Al-Kalam Imam Ghazali's definition of Al-Kalam in al Mustasfa, and then I'm going to move on to the section on Haqqiqatul Nabuwa in al munkas min al and it will be become clear that uh, um, Ghazali's project is totally different from what Iqbal is attribu attributing it to him here. In fact, he is uh, reading Ghazali in the uh, with the lens of modern philosophy and 
uh, in light of uh, Descartes and Kant. Uh, in fact, it's very anachronistic, as I said last time. Okay, let's look at um, uh, the definition of Al-Kalam first. In, in fact, before we look at the definition of Al-Kalam, I should just go over what I said just uh, now. Um, so, Ghazali, finding no hope in analytic thought, moved to mystic experience. Uh, well, how Ghazali, uh, how Iqbal is reading is analytic thought. So that's al-aql, or reason. So, as Iqbal reads him, Ghazali was looking for the grasp of infinite through reason. But he realized that reason can't do that, so he moved on to mystic experience. And in mixed mystic experience, uh, in Iqbal's words, um, total infinite, total infinite. I guess that's what he mean by total infinite. I, I'm assuming that it means God. Total infinite is revealed to him in mixed mis <laughs> mystic experience and uh, which led him to believe in the cleavage between thought and intuition thought and intuition this philosophy i guess basis of philosophy and intuition, uh, this uh, mediated conceptual thought, mediated, or uh, intuition is a direct experience, and that uh, happens uh, for Ghazali in mystic experience, which proved that intuition and thoughts are separate things. Um, in fact, as I said, that uh, Ghazali do um, through uh, the Neoplatonic uh, and Aristotelian influences on Ghazali through Ibn Sina and Farabi. He does believe in some, some sort of intuition for a local through which it uh, grasps the eternal propositions or necessary propositions of logic and reasons and the principles of sufficient reason and all those things and uh, so he doesn't really see um, contradiction between or cleavage between a local and intuition in fact in fact both intuition and a local in fact both uh, As we will see, what Adali see is that Akl has its uh, realm of function, and that's the intelligibles. Uh, and that uh, alakl on its own, like self-sufficiently, cannot cross the realities of another world, which is the world of uh, metaphysics. On the realm of the creator uh, 
and even in so called mystic experience ghazali doesn't say it, doesn't claim that you actually encounter infinite as a totality but you have just the glimpses glimpses of that and that's why you need uh, as the tales haqiqat wast wastarar kafat al khalq ilaiha kafat al khalq yani philosophers and uh, scholars and the sufis and the medicine men and the scientists all are in need of prophethood why because we need a relationship with our creator and that relationship can't be established self sufficiently self sufficiently either on the basis of reason or intuition or mystic experience on or scientific experience you need revelation for that and revelation is totally different from mystic experience so called mystic obviously experience ghazali doesn't use that uh, through ilm al mukashafa oh because ilm al mukashafa is just gives you the glimpse of of the metaphysical reality like uh, al aql or reason also gives you glimpse of that reality but in very speculative manner the only difference uh, between um, the experience of mukashafa is that it gives you some inkling for the revelation it prepares you for the reality of revelation because the sufi experience something in a very tiny way which uh, a messenger of god experiences so he he sort of stands as a witness to the possibility and reality of revelation through this experience like dreams for example ghazali says dreams are also harbinger uh, of uh, uh, the experience of revelation because the prophet said that uh, nabuwa has 46 the message uh, the prophet would uh, the dream the the true dreams are the 46th part 46th part of so 44th part so unknown to the dream but these dream through true uh, dreams we get some glimpse of so, the reality of the revelation similarly a mystic also let's say it's a three part of <laughs> those 46 part so it gives us a glimpse of the reality of the message uh, the prophet told. and that's that's the crux of the argument with which ghazali presents in um, in al munkis bin dalal especially in the section on haqiqat an nabuwa wa istirar kafat al khalq ilayha the nature of the nature of prophet prophethood and the compelling need of all creatures for it all creatures for it all creatures for it in fact all creation for it uh so uh yeah so if you look at it while sex again the khadali finding no hope in analytic thought it's not that he found, found no hope in analytic thought he realized that what is the what is the actual function of analytic thought? the function of analytic thought is to grasp intelligibles um and he realizes that analytic thought is not the pro- proper medium to grasp the metaphysical reality especially the reality of the creator he moved to mystic experience to the experience of mukashafa and there found an independent content for religion it's not that he found an independent content for religion in mystic experience what he found was the glimpse of uh, the reality of the prophethood 
So what he found in the mystic experience was what he found in the experience of Mukashifa or Kashf. Um, and the Mushahida was the glimpse a reflection a tajalli even tajalli less way less and way qualitatively different than the tajalli with Musa so that what tajalli wasn't God that reflection was just the shadow of that reality, even shadow of the shadow of that reality. So Sufi's experience is even less and less than that, way less than that. But it's important uh, because it gives us the zok or taste and uh, I'll, uh, the Sufi, uh, the Imam, the Alim, the Rabbani becomes the witness to the reality of revelation. Not just conceptually, uh, or not just as a possibility which... Uh, so the reason also, as we'll see in Imam Ghazali's definition of Al-Kalam, gives us a glimpse of the reality of Revelation, but that's through its conceptual tool. But the experience of the reality of the experience of the uh, experience of the glimpse um, of revelation, uh, what uh, a Sufi does. Is experienced that sort of reality, even though in a very. And similarly, in the true dream, you, you true dreams, you you experience experience the true, the reality of revelation, even though it's only its forty sixth part. Similarly, um, Sufi actually experiences the reality of revelation, but in a very tiny way, in a re, in a very reflective way, in a. In a, in a way which is similar to, but yeah, much more in depth than true dream. And in that, it, it sort of uh, give witness to the possibility and reality of Nabuwa or the prophethood. So it's not just, it's not that uh, he found uh, in the mystic experience independent content for religion. What he found in Mukashifa experience is the uh, justification, an independent justification of the veracity of revelation. But that independent justification is also found in, in reason. And as I said uh, in Iqbal, there is no cleavage between intu uh, in, in Ghazali, there is no cleavage between intuition and Al-Aql as such. Let's go back to the text again. So in this way he succeeded in securing, uh, sorry, an mystic experience they're found in independent content for religion. So justification for it. So in, in a sense, uh, a Mutakallim and Sufi are in the same plane. Um, and that is very clear from, uh, if you uh, read Maulana Rumi, who is Sufi as well as Mutakallim, uh, and a poet, you will see that the function of uh, a Sufi merges in a f function of Mutakallim. So in a sense, Sufi in this sense is also a Mutakallim in this way. Al-Mutakallim provide justification for Islam, external justification for Islam through reason, 
through the... On the other hand, a Sufi is also a Mutakalli. A Sufi... Uh, especially a Sufi... Is also a Mutakalli because through his experience... He provides the independent justification for the reality of revelation. So it's 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 higher than mutakallim because mutakallim only provide the justification for the possibility of the uh, revelation. But a Sufi is a mutakallim, a higher order mutakallim in the sense that he provides the reality of. The actuality, uh, justification for the actuality of revelation because he himself had an experience which, although just the absolutely tiniest part of the reality of revelation, it still gets the glimpse of the glory of the revelation through through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace and through the grace of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in this sense, uh, uh, we feel that uh, Iqbal mistreats Ghazali again, which is a bit... Sad, but uh, anyway, uh, he he worked in his time, and we are working in our time. So, and we are working in the shade of Iqbal. No, 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 no doubt about that. So, um, Gaudali, finding no hope in analytic thought, moved to mystic experience. They found an independent content for. In this way, he succeeded in securing for religion the right to exist. If we mean justification independently of science and metaphysics. Uh, uh, which is a bit strange because science and metaphysics are the subjects here. Metaphysics, um, so it's not as if independent of science. Yes, it's, it's independent of science and metaphysics. By metaphysics, obviously, you're just meaning reason. Um, because the whole thing is about metaphysics. So it's not as if religion is something else. Um but he's talking about metaphysics as a discipline. Uh, so he does find, find uh, right to, uh, I mean, justification, independent justification of, uh, of uh, religion, not just on the basis of uh, Ilmul Mukashifa, he does on that basis, but also on the basis of reason, even though the justification on the in the realm of Mukashafa is much higher because as against uh, rational justification it also provides not just provide the possibility but also the reality of the justification for the reality of the revolution but the revolution of the total infinite so that's actually a blasphemy um, I'm sure Iqbal didn't mean that but but the revolution of total infinite in mystic as well it's just a glimpse of the total infinite. It's not even a revelation of the infinite. It's, it's glimpse. Even the tiniest part of glimpse. Convince him the finitude and inconclusion of thought. No. It um, convince him of the reality of the... And so that's for Yaqeen. Uh, He was already convinced that uh, Al-Aql has its realm. But mystic experience convinced him of the reality of the prophethood. So he came back with a much firmer grip on the reality of the revelation than he had through his uh, conceptual tools before. And drove him to draw. No, he didn't draw any cleavage between intuition and thought. It's just that intuition is intuition and thought is thought. They have different function, but there's no cleavage, as we'll see. Now, uh, I think I don't have a time to go to uh, Ghazali's text, but we'll take them in the next session. But we were able to cover this uh, passage conceptually. Now we'll get some. Uh, firmer grip on this through uh, Ghazali's texts. A brief look at his texts, uh, which I mentioned in the next section, in the next, in the next session, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.